What up YouTube, it's your boy Fancy Man here. I am fresh off trail. About three days ago, I wrapped up my 2024 Appalachian Trail through hike and I'm ready to tell you about what I had with me along the way. Let's get started, we're gonna do this all in one take. First up, what I had on my feet. I was rocking Ultras, whether it's the Olympus models, which I used the five and sixes, or the Lone Peaks, which I had the five and the eights. Um, they were great. Feet are very, very, very individual, so you gotta find what works for you. I tried a bunch, and ultimately it was the wide toe box of the Ultras that worked for me. Inside the Lone Peaks, because I wanted a little more cush, especially for those rocks and roots, I put in some super feet insoles. Moving up from the shoes, I was always rocking a pair of Injinjis. Now I went through several versions of them, but settled on the Injinji run. These were the ones that worked best for me. Um, they were also the ones that were the toughest. I tried the generics, didn't work as well as the Injinji runs. They also are very thin and dry fast. On top of the Injinjis and on top of the Ultras, I had the Dirty Girl Gators. These were awesome at keeping crap out of my shoes so I didn't get little rocks or pebbles or, or sticks in there or dirt or grime that would cause my feet to fall apart. So Dirty Girl Gators were great. Even when they uh, busted in the little clips that hook on to my shoes, I still tucked them between the laces and they worked perfectly. Moving on up, I got a pair of cheap Amazon polyester shorts, 20 bucks. It's important that they dry fast. I didn't have anything as far as rain pants or rain kilt, anything like that. I just had quick dry shorts. They were great. Underneath those shorts, I always had a pair of, um, these are Unico uh, boxer briefs. Uh, they give you the support you need. They protect from chafing. Again, they are also quick dry as well. Upper bod, I had a shirt originally got from AliExpress as a merino wool. However, this is a $6 shirt that I got from Walmart. It is dry tech, um, so again, it's quick dry. Quick drying is super important because you are gonna get sweaty, you are gonna get wet, you are gonna need to wash clothes, you are gonna have, want it to dry fast so you're not, uh, if you only have one outfit, wearing damp clothes at the end of it. <sighs> Keep my head protected, I had a cheap cap, this was an AliExpress special. Um, they are awesome at keeping the sun out your eyes and uh, keeping the rain out of your face when you're hiking. Next up, trekking poles. These are carbon fiber poles. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. These are Nature Hike, 35 bucks. They work extremely well. Like most poles on the trail, you're gonna have probably at least one pole have an issue with the tip. Um, these are replacements that I got along the way just grabbed from Hyperbox. So, carbon fiber poles, trekking poles, you're gonna need a pair. These Nature Hike ones work. This is a different pack than I started out with. I wanted to have a lighter, smaller pack so I can move more efficiently on the trail. This one is a Hyperlite pack. It has performed like a true champ. I got about halfway, so over a thousand miles on this pack and I've had no issues. Um, the alternative to this could be uh, a nature hike pack. I'll uh, link it up there on the screen so you see the alternative, but I needed this in a hurry. When I came back home, I only had a couple of days, couldn't wait for packs, so I got something that could ship and get to me in a couple of days, and it's the Hyperlite Contour 35. It's a frameless pack, only weighs a pound, it's been awesome. It also has these two pockets in front, which I really like because it's quick crack. I keep my water bottle. This water bottle's been with me for half the trip, so over a thousand miles, and the first one lasted also a thousand miles. Just an essential water bottle, the sports top, so I can grab it, get some water, and pop it back in. In the other pocket, this is where I keep my phone. This is where I keep my headphones. And this is also where I usually keep that camera that I'm filming on, which is a DJI Action 4. So, front pockets have been awesome for quick access. This pack's also really great because the bottom pocket is, oh, there's stuff in here. So the bottom pocket is where I keep my snacks. The more you stop on trail, the longer your day is going to be and the less miles you're going to get in. So it's important to keep, you know, your snacks with you, easy access. You can see here that I do have one snack left. So um, as I'm hiking, I will put snacks, pull snacks from this bottom pocket, and then in this other side of the pocket, that's where I put the trash. 
very, very convenient feature. Didn't even know how important it was until I started to use it. Um, I love that feature. Side pockets. In this side pocket is where I keep my shades. So for the most part, you're hiking in a green tunnel and that hat works well. However, when you are out of the green tunnel, when you're in town or wherever, you wanna make sure you're protecting your eyes with your shades and this is where I keep them. Also in this pocket is where I keep my cold soap jar. Um, Talenti jars on the trail are very popular because they are sturdy. They work well for putting a pack of ramen in here and then filling it up with your filtered water and then letting it soak. I like to keep it here because if I know I'm gonna be in camp in say a half hour or whatever and I wanna eat right away, I'll stop, take time, fill it up, let it soak and when I get there, I'm good to go. Don't have to go in the back. Or also, I have my filter in here. This is a Sawyer squeeze filter. This is the standard one. This works way better than any other kind of filter that I've seen on the trail as far as the Sawyer goes, like the minis, because um, the flow rate is great and it's easy to use. And then I usually team that up with a two liter C knockback. So this is how I filter water on the trail. Flipping it over to the other side, we're gonna use our imaginations a little bit. This is where I kept the tarp tent that was loaned to me by my buddy Bamboo. Shout out to Bamboo. Having a one pound Dyneema tent um, was such a great upgrade. I still have not invested in one myself, but the next time I do it through hike, I will be doing that. But in its place, I have the tent poles, which weigh about the same as the whole tent system uh, from uh, Tarp Tent, which was an Aeon Lee Tarp Tent. Um, so tent usually goes in the outer pocket there. Along with that is this hoop kit, which really consists of just some wadded up toilet paper in its own little Ziploc baggie to prevent it from getting wet, and a thing of Purell right there in a Ziploc bag. And now we will look at the outer pocket. In the outer pocket, I will usually keep my rain jacket. So this is a 30 something dollar frog tog. It has been extremely invaluable as far as keeping me dry on the trail. You know, there's something to be said about uh, having a rain jacket because you don't want to be cold and damp uh, all day long. I know some people don't even use any rain gear, but having dry at the end of the day, because I only have one outfit, it's, uh, it's something that is a safety feature but it's also something that's a comfort feature as well too. So frog tog, this is the extreme light version. It's not the, the regular frog togs. This one has proven itself to be much better than those, uh, the standard frog togs. So you can go to the frog togs website and get that one. All right, that's the outside. Now we're gonna take a look at the gear on the inside. This is a 12 liter dry pack stuff sack. Again, it's AliExpress, probably $3, but I'll put it on the screen for you. And inside I keep some things that are very important, such as food. Now there's no food in here now, but what I found best is to break up the day into breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Snacks I keep on the bottom pocket, but breakfast, lunch, and dinner I'll keep in these heavy duty, um, smell proof, tough, reusable Ziploc baggies. Uh, these have been great, much better than the standard Ziploc baggies, which can develop little holes. Um, I get about a thousand miles of use, so I've had to replace them about halfway, but they're awesome. So each day I'll have up to no more than three days worth of food. I usually try to carry one to two days um, worth of food, sometimes three days, and I usually just keep them in these bags. Uh, <laughs> vitamin I and a thing of hot sauce. Uh, that's all I had left. I also have another Ziploc bag in here. This is where I put my phone and my headphones on super rainy days to give it a little extra protection from the moisture. There's also another one that is dirty and gross, needs to be washed. This is where I keep the bulk trash not the little wrappers and stuff from snacks, but usually the uh, tuna packs, 
the uh, instant mashed potatoes or uh, other stuff that should be sealed off in a smell proof bag at the end of the day. I keep my toothbrush, my toothpaste, and two dental picks in here. Yes, I've only used two dental picks the whole time. And it's in a little Ziploc baggie. And then a light low towel. These are basically like uh, a chamois or a Swedish dishcloth. They hold a lot of water. You can use it to wipe your hands. You can use it to clean. I've used this as a shower towel. Um, this also can wipe condensation from the tent. Extremely handy, multi-purpose. Definitely something I always be bringing. Up next is my electronics. Another great use for these resealable heavy duty Ziploc bags is to keep stuff um, safe from the rain. In here I have cables. I actually have three cables because my adapter, which is a 65 watt adapter, extremely small but extremely powerful. So I have USB-C everything, um, USB-C, two cables, and then I have a smaller one for charging my headphone and the camera. So this has two USB-C's and a standard USB-A and they all go to USB-C out. All electronics that I have can charge off USB-C. Makes it so much easier. Headlamp, definitely essential gear. This is a night core. It has the red light. Proper etiquette is to use the red light at night so you're not blasting people um, with your bright spotlight and keeping them up. Uh, again, USB-C charging works extremely well, lasts a very long time, and it's fast to charge. Nikkor also is the manufacturer of the two power banks. I use a lot of power. These are 10,000 milliamp power banks by Nikkor, USB-C out on both of these. They are fast to charge in a couple hours, so you're not wasting time all day long. Or if you are charging um, overnight, you can charge them up, no problems. They are very lightweight, and why do I have two instead of that big bulky one that I had to begin with? Well, these are actually lighter than having one 20,000, and it's also something that you can have one plugged in and charging while you're using the other one. And it is redundancy as well, too. So this is actually a better way to do it. Stick with two 10,000s. Another piece of essential gear, I can't tell you how essential this is. There are a lot of people that have sleep apnea, they are snoring bears. Um, I prefer to sleep in a shelter for ease of uh, setup and takedown. And if I didn't have these, I probably would not be uh, sleeping in a shelter. These are a little bit different design than the bullet ones. These are more of the, it look like a little goldfish design. These work better for my ears and they block the sound tremendously well and I get a very solid night's sleep. I also wear contacts and this is where I keep contact lenses and I do have a lighter for starting fires. And when I have a full beard, I use this comb. <laughs> uh, didn't bring it along with me but happened to find it sealed a pack of combs in one of the hyper boxes along the way and I like it. Sometimes it's just a meditative thing. Sometimes it actually helps keep the beard uh, in good shape. Next up, we have some clothing. Other than the clothing that I already mentioned, I bring some additional clothing with me. If you've watched any of the other videos, you know that I love this beanie. This beanie is a handmade beanie by Sheila from Franklin, Tennessee. Um, we were actually at a bar called Rat something, Rat Scallion, Rat Catcher, rat whatever but it's awesome it's a knit hat keeps my head nice and warm it's soft it's comfortable i can sleep with it no problem um, so that is always going to be in there i also have for when it gets a little bit colder on the trail this is just the thermal base this one was cheap from aliexpress probably another few dollars and then another pair of injinji toe socks these not only help with the blisters but this is the uh, brand of socks that has been a proven winner over time and I've tried several different kinds. So I'll keep a spare pair for when I want to keep one pair that got really grimy, stinky. I'll wash it in uh, a stream, I'll wash it in a sink, I'll wash it with my filtered water. And as that pair is tied to the outside of my bag drying out, I have something else for that. 
Now, I also have three shower caps. I like to keep everything in my tent, so when I am pulling my shoes off and putting them in the tent, I'll put them in these shower caps first. So, basically, I'll just stick them on like this, and then I can just drop this into the tent and not have to worry about my filthy shoes getting the inside of the tent all day. So, got two shower caps for the shoes, and then one shower cap for my camp shoes. I originally had the Crocs flip-flops, they were kind of bulky. They didn't stay on because they didn't have the uh, sport mode or they didn't have the, the back strap. Um, however, these zero shoes, zero sandals I should say, they are extremely lightweight. They pack down very small. They have a very secure grip on my feet. So I use these on the trail and actually in real life, these are what I'll often be wearing to the beach. Um, they're great water shoes as well too. As we dig deeper down into the bag, I got my puffy. Because everything is so light and my total pack weight is probably between 15 and no more than 20 pounds even with food, I'll keep this with me for any time I'm gonna be out in temperatures that are in the or below. So this is a cheap um, synthetic puffy jacket made by a 33,000 feet. Um, got on Amazon for I think 40 bucks. I'll put all this stuff up on the screen so you can see exactly what it is and where I got it from and how much I paid for it. Next up is a air mattress. This is a Nature Hike, probably my favorite brand because it's really good quality and it is often way cheaper than some of the big name brands. This is a regular mummy, weighs less than a pound, it's performed really well. It is different than the huge one that I had for the first half of the trip. So this one has been with me the second half of the trip, so about a second thousand plus miles, and I love it. The way that I have this frameless pack packed is that I do have a Gossamer Gear 1 8 foam pad um, against my back to give this a little bit more shape. This is what I put down when I'm sitting. This is also what I'll open and fold out for when I am uh, sleeping as well. My air mattress goes on top of that. And then at the bottom of my pack, as I unroll it here, is just a plastic bag. This is, I believe, a Nylon pack liner from Gossamer Gear. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see exactly what it is. This makes sure that the stuff that I would need to keep dry, the critical gear that needs to keep dry, is dry. Um, so in here, I have my sleeping bag. This is a Nature Hike sleeping bag. Again, it weighs about a pound. It is something that is a uh, different one that I originally had. I originally had a heavier one that was for, I think, 40 degree comfort. This is 50 degree comfort. I'm pretty much a fair weather hiker. Then if it's dipping into the 30s, as long as I have my puffy, my base layer, um, long sleeve thermal, I stay nice and warm. Oh, don't forget to add it as well. So, Nature Hike sleeping bag. I have a generic pillow. Again, an AliExpress less than $10 pillow. Um, it's really soft, it's quilted on this side. It gives me a good night's sleep. And then for those really cold nights, you can use a silk sleeping bag liner. Again, this is Nature Hike, my favorite brand. I think it was 20 bucks AliExpress. This will give you another five to 10 degrees. Make sure you your butt off if it does dip down to. And that is everything. So there is an empty bag. That's everything that I had along the way on my 2,000 plus mile 2024 AT through hike. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to address them. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.